Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart and today we have a brand new video on my channel it is a new game, it is called Real Warfare 2 Northern Crusades now I discovered this uh, game off a different YouTube channel um, his name is Wurses and a link to his channel will be on the page right now and also in the description now this game is a strategy game much like Total War but it also has elements similar to Mountain Blade Warband so without further ado, I will click the Northern Crusades button here. I'll click on New Campaign. Alas, we begin. So this is an indie game. It doesn't have the same uh, pool of resources that perhaps Paradox games or uh, games made by the creative, creative Assembly, such as Total War, would have. Prussia is the stronghold of heathenism in Eastern Europe. It is a savage land filled with savage people and safe for any Christian. To defend his borders, the King of Poland appealed to the most glorious warriors of the time, the Knights of the Teutonic Order. In the distant year of 1230, they founded the Castle Thor, their first fortress on the bank of the Vizsla River. Thus, the next chapter of the Teutonic Order's glory was opened. Step by step, they conquered territories, sometimes advancing victorious, sometimes retreating, but steadily etching with sharpened steel glorious new pages to the history of the Order. Now, take up your sword and fight alongside them. Only then will you be able to say, I was there. At the enemy! So there we go, that was the introduction to this campaign. Now, this is set in medieval Eastern Europe, so you have Poland, you have uh, modern-day uh, Ukraine and Russia. I'll just go through the campaign map briefly for you guys so you can see what it looks like. So we have Poznan over here, we have Gdansk in the north. Uh, in the east we have... Look, some big places in the east that I can pronounce. Um, what can I pronounce? Dilnius over here, Riga over here, so I think it's Estonia, Riga. We also have part of Sweden in the north up here. We can't quite go that far, but if I move my mouse over here, you should be able to see. There we go, Stockholm is up in the north. We have Kalmar by here, and it goes as far west as Berlin, I think. Let's see, yeah, Berlin over there, and Prague just, just to the south of it. And that's basically what the map looks like. Now, you start off as a character, if I can find him, I've lost my place already in this map, I think we're over here somewhere, yes we're over here. You start off, and this is what you look like on the map, you're a knight, you have some options here, so we have goods, at the moment we have five flour and we have five fish, we have a journal which tells you uh, what your missions are, so at the moment our status is to reach the castle of Marglin. Mark Gilno and introduce yourself to Landmeister Dietrich von Grunigen. and it gives you a description of the missions as well. By here we have a map which gives you basically the map as on about earlier which you can drag yourself through so we have Sweden, Stockholm, Kalmar, Malmo, uh, we have Berlin over here, Prague, Vienna in the south, Budapest, Munich and it goes as far then as as uh, Kiev and Pronsk, is that Pronsk? Yeah. So got a diplomacy option here. Don't quite know what that is. Cause I'm only I'm new to this game myself, so I'm just kind of finding it my my own way. Different factions. You have Poland. You have Lithuanian rebels, Prussia, Rus, Scandinavian, Holy Roman Empire, Teutonic Order, and Mongols. And then by here you have an army. This is what I currently have. So Andreas von Velven. That's who I am. Gives you my troop cost, my leadership. Primary weapon, secondary weapon, armor, morale, commander, strength, my losses, enemies killed, unit stats in my services, and the last one was battle count. And I also have irregular footmen. That's my army so far. So without further ado, we'll do the first mission, I think. So uh, any any uh, missions in the journals will usually have this uh, apostrophe, or exclamation mark, sorry, up here, which you can see just above Mog Mogilno. These names are going to ter terribly uh, throw me, I'm sure. So just click on your your uh, general, 
and go there. But as you can see on the left hand side, a little letter has just come in for me. So if I click on that, Teutonic Order and Rus are entering a non aggression pact. So this updates you with the things which are going on for all the different factions on the map. So I'm going to click to go to Morgilno with my general. He's a level 1. I have 125 gold. Don't have any army experience, but I do have 10 food. And there we go. Greetings, my brother in knighthood. Good tidings on your safe arrival from the Holy Land. What brings you to Prussia? Surely serving in this wilderness is not nearly so honourable as protecting the Holy Sepulchre. I am but a humble knight, and I can only obey the Hochmeister. Hermann von Salsa believes that my services are most needed here. So you get some dialogue, and let's see what's happened. I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you. Dude's just walked out, patrol. Ah, right. We gotta go back in, I think. Yes. Um, my Amber Knight. Oh, I'll click this, of course. My, my fault if I click the X rather than the thing. We received a message from Palestine the day before your arrival. The Hockmeister mentioned you were exiled for a rather serious malfaction. Malfaction? Yes, it is sad but true. Without a doubt, this matter that the Hockmeister has mentioned carries much shame. But we all make mistakes in our youth. I hope you will earn your forgiveness by good work and valiant deeds. I am ready to perform any task you see fit to entrust me with, Landmeister. Good. Then I say welcome, brother. Welcome to our ranks. Considering your experience and the circumstances, I assign you to serve as the Compte of Thorn. Go now and survey the lands you now command. Time is of the essence. I shall leave at once. So there we go. That's the first mission, basically, in this game. And it tells you up by here. You can actually drag the journal around as well, so that's quite good. And rather than having a, uh, you know, a standard kind of thing right in the middle of the screen, I can throw it over here and see what's happening over here if I need to. And now it wants me to go to Thorn. If I click on here, Ta task accomplished: joining the order. Quest: join the order. That's my new quest. So we will zoom out with the scroll wheel on the mouse. And as you can see, let's see where's it gone. Ah, over here, Thorn. Torn is over here with the little uh, exclamation mark. So we're going to click there, oh. and my knight is now going to make his way to Torn. I like the design. I mean, this does look a lot like Mountain Blade Warband on the campaign map. Right. So your so you are the new Comte of Thorn. Welcome, my lord. What are your orders? First, gather the garrison by the main gates. I shall inspect the troops. Oh my lord, what a fine castle this is. A single yard at the Barbican on the Montfort Castle in Galli could hold it comfortably. Although, I have to admit, the first fort we had to defend from the Saracens was smaller than a kennel. Anyway, I hope the fortune will smile upon you for now, as it did back then. Okay, so we're going to click on No Time for Reminiscing. We need to see how the land lies. Task accomplished. Inspect your new holdings. That's my new task. And we're going to do that by going... Oh, hang on a second. There we go. Mission came to me this time. Dietrich von Grunigun, Landmeister of Prussia. I hope you have familiarised yourself with the lay of the land. Here is your first task. Find and eliminate Pippin. His robbers are at work to the north of your castle, around the villages of Schocken and Schocklau. Assemble your soldiers and go after them. Yes, Landmeister, we shall take to the field immediately. So there we go. We're going to have a battle on our hands, guys. According to the journal, Pippin's robbers, and if we have a look around the map quickly, look for that little exclamation mark, that will tell us where where the quest shall be. Let's see, oh, over there, there we go. Troops, that's, that's, that's our mission over here. So we're going to click on him and we're going to make our Attack way there the slowly. Pretty simple, pretty basic at the moment. And yeah, the, the map actually reminds me an awful lot of Mountain Blade Warband. Except it's more detail on this uh, campaign map. And now we get to show you a battle by, by here. So this is Pippin's gang. Who the hell are you? Run while you still can. Let us see what tune you sing with a noose tightening around your neck. Teutons, attack! And he has one unit of irregular footmen. I have one unit of irregular footmen but, but with less men. But I also have cavalry as well. So I will commence and the battle shall load up. So we have our first battle. I get to show you guys what the battle is like right now. And it's an indie game, so don't go into this, if you do buy this game, don't go into this expecting the kind of sophistication that you would expect from Paradox or Total War. 
However, it's a good game if you keep yourself open-minded with it. Get used to the controls, because the controls do differ quite a lot to Total War. For instance, this is the start of the map right now. I can select my two units by clicking and dragging, but I can't actually move them anyway. So, But if I put them, if I actually drag them to here, look, and then click Start Battle, the battle has begun. they will move there straight away. And I'll prepare to go through the options on here. So we have the map. We can, of course, click the plus and the minus to zoom out of this map. We have a menu to escape. We have the accelerated time, which we can click to go fast. We can click pause. We can click play. We can go for run. Or we can just go for a simple march. Forward. Forward. And we have an offensive mode and a defensive mode. If you click one, Oh, sorry, wrong button. If you click insert, you will group them. So if I highlight them, all of them, and then click insert. Group the units. One group of units. Commander. Commander. Militiamen. I'm going to push the militiamen forward and quite, into quite a deep formation like so. Commanding I'm officer. going to take my cavalry to the right flank in the thin line. I'm going to engage them from the front and then hit them in the side with the cavalry. That's what I plan to do in this battle. I should show you the landscape quite quickly. So it, look, it looks quite beautiful. This is on highest graphic settings, which is Ultra. I think it's Shader Model 3 is the highest shader model they have. Yeah, it's quite beautiful for an indie game. I do enjoy how it looks. If you zoom up close to the units, quite a lot of detail in there. It reminds me a lot of Medieval 2 Total War as far as graphics go with the units, except it's, I think this is probably better. But then again, Medieval 2 Total War is a much older game. I'm going to engage them now from the flank. I'm going to counter with the cavalry, with the cavalry charge into the into the flank, I think. Or oh, actually, I might come up via right here and then flank so I can hit them in the rear. There we go. Now attack. This is going to be good. We're going to zoom in. We're going to see this. Cavalry charge into the rear. Boom! And if we hover over them, the regular footmen, they have... Oh wait, that's my men. Where are they gone? I think they've routed straight away actually. Yes, they've routed. 38 out of 200. We've barely lost any men, so quite straightforward. I'm not 100% sure how um, height advantage plays a part, because I know with some, some strategy games it doesn't play a part, but if like I put pikemen up here, it should actually affect their stats and their morale and stuff. But there we go, that's the first battle. That's what the battlefield is, is like. They're just chasing them down right now. Can, t can let them chase them down and carry on like this, which they're doing right now. But we're going to click the end of battle in the top left. And then this screen gives you the statistics of the battle. So 160 versus 200. We captured 142. And yeah. I'll leave that there for you guys to view for a few moments and I'm going to click on the continue button. You can also play again, you can save the replay of the battle or you can exit to Windows. Don't want to, don't want to do that right now, we're going to click continue. Soldiers witnessing the death of their commander may have a significant decrease in courage. And we have the loading screen. Loading screen is not too bad, not as bad as Shogun 2, although you do have to wait a little bit sometimes. There we go, not too bad. And we have trophies, so we, that's our flower and our fish. But we now have some tools which we can take, so we'll take all. And we will finish. God was on our side, my lord, and the battle was won. We should return to Thorn now. Okay, so we were gonna return to Thorn. Where is Thorn over here? Go. I think the problem with me is that because these these places are quite hard to actually pronounce. <laughs> I'll try my best though. If I am wrong, please correct me. Alright, so Castellan of Thorn, my lord, you have returned. We heard rumours you had taught the robbers a lesson. Is there anything you need? I captured a lot of loot, what can I do with it? You can sell your trophies to the travelling merchants. They flock to battlefields like flies to honey. I shall look out for merchants then. There we go. And we have some goods which you can buy. So this is how much gold I have, 125, and I have a capacity for 50 items by the looks of things. I've used 12, so 
What do we want? Elite weapons. Elite armor, maybe? No, too much. It costs too much. Cost too much. But for now, we're just going to. Oh, we'll sell all. Click on sell all. Ah, there we go. We got 284. Go excellent. Excellent. And now we want to nothing. Thank you. And my heroes leveled up. So we have a level up screen by here as well, which you can click on down here with the helmet is. I have two skill points. We have glorious warlord. And if I hover over them, it says warriors cost less to hire. Master packer increases inventory size by 10% for each skill level. Merchant, which will be for trading. Pathfinding. We have tax collector. We have trophy collector. Fast learner. Healer. Warrior trainer. Prey before battle, spear mastery, melee mastery, cavalry mastery, which I'm going to go for because we have cavalry, of course, critical shot mastery, defense mastery, and critical strike mastery. I'm going to go for, I think I'll go for critical strike, so we get one of each, and we'll click accept. And we go, we're level two now, so we get a little bit more experience. Our leadership has gone up slightly, my army experience has gone up slightly as well. And there we are. Now we have some missions again. So there we go. That tells you the experience and everything which I gained in the previous battle. And it tells me what I've achieved there as well. Messenger. So messages just come to me. I come bearing orders from Dietrich von Grunigen. Advance to the village of Leber, where Pippin's robbers have been sighted. Find and eliminate them. If you have any questions, ask the messenger. We are taking the field. Okay, so new mission again. We must find the caravan robbers near the village of Labour. And where's Labour? Ah, over there. So we're just going to click on Attack on the robbers, the but there, and we're going to go and chase them down and hopefully kill them. Oh, didn't know where he was going then. And we can take in the scenery while we traipse across the map over here. Some different factions are galloping around with their generals. We have some nice trees, some nice villages, lovely looking sea over there with Sweden across the ocean. There we go, so leader of the caravan robbers, look here, this is the vaunted Comteur of Thorn who slew many of our kind. Prepare to die, wretched Teuton. We shall see who is wretched once the fight is over to arms, or we can say, well then, you've just sealed your fate, now you shall feel the difference between caravan guards and the knights of the order. I'm going to go with that option. So, they have more men this time, they have some irregular footmen again but they also have some pikemen so I'm going to have to be careful if I engage their pikemen with my my irregular footmen oh, sorry my cavalry don't really want to be charging cavalry into pikemen that's always a no-no it's like the number one first rule never charge cavalry into pikemen and we have another loading screen I'm, not, I'm going to not cut these loading screens out just I think it's fair that if you're new to this game and thinking of purchasing it, you get an idea of how long it will take to load up. I want to show you as much as I can in this in this uh, episode, and then if you guys actually like this this video and want to see me play more of it, I might turn this then into a proper campaign at a later date. And there we go. So, start the battle again. God with us. Their units are over here. They have two units over here. I thought they had three. No, they had two, of course. Silly me. Right, which one's the pikeman? Pikeman's on right. Right, so if you look at the icons, two swords, but they're a kind of pike or spear, but they kind of tells you what they are. And then with us, it's the same, but we have like a wreath and a horse around my cavalry, which shows they're the general. Army commander. I'm actually going to bring my infantry up here. And I'm going to move my Command general up here. The reason I'm doing that, I don't want my cavalry on this flank because of their pikemen. I'll go for a cavalry charge if possible on their swordsmen or irregular footmen. I'm gonna zoom in, see what the pikemen look like. They look quite beastly, I, I think. Reminds me an awful lot of Medieval 2, like the, the actual individual unit designs. You've got like one or two or three, like that guy is the same as that guy, that guy is the same as that guy, and so on. And we are having a bit, a bit of lag right now, but that's probably because I'm recording, guys. It doesn't usually lag like this. Plus, there's also more units on the field this time. And they're actually drawn to my... My cavalry. So we're going to bring the cavalry up here. There we 
go. Sounds like a good plan. Outflanking them now. As we send in the irregular footmen against the pikemen. I don't like the, the look of that, but if I can clear out their, their regular footmen with my cavalry, we might be in business. Let's see. Charge! Boom! Oh, don't go onto the pikes, you fools! No! <laughs> pull out, pull out. Right, we're onto their pikes now. And my general can now do a, a horn of morale. Help us all out. I think once you engage, you engage. Can't do anything about it, unfortunately. Are we doing okay? Looks like they are suffering some losses. As you can see, they attack multiple enemies, so this part of the units are attacking here, this part of the units are attacking there. So it's just become one big cluster now, basically. The enemy. And they go and search for their own targets as well, which is kind of cool. Might lose this battle, actually. Wouldn't be surprised. 100 men left, 98 le men left. 9 in my general. Commander! Commander! Yep, we're losing this battle. Let's fast forward it anyway. Yes, we've lost this battle. Damn. Whoopsie. <laughs> there we are. Let's quick play. Get normal speed going again. I have no control of anyone anymore. Better death than and there we dishonor. go. End of the battle. Death to the defeated. So we're going to click the end battle. And again, we have a statistics screen. Click continue. And here we go again. Back on the loading screen. I like the artwork and I like the some of the tips it gives you, like when maneuvering to pass by an enemy, try to position your moving troops so that the enemy will only see them as they fall to the ground from their deadly strikes. And there we go. So I am going to end this video here. I hope I've given you guys a small insight into this game, Real Warfare 2 Northern Crusades. There's also a video linked in the description and it is on the screen as well to Verses. He's also done a video on this if you want to see, check that out as well. I'll also link in on the description the Steam page for this game as well. I've been Dragonheart. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Until next time, goodbye.